In a day and age where convenience and performance reign king, coming across the perfect marriage of camera excellence is a difficult task. I'm here with my good friend Shaman, who's also been putting his G2 through its paces the last few months, and we'll speak about the pros and cons of this camera. So yeah, we've made it to Shinbashi. I brought my G2, Shaman's brought his G2. I've got the 28 on mine, he's got the 45. 45 better. Um, we just wanna do a couple rolls of 800 ISO film to kinda show you the difference in I mean, just how the, how the camera tests and runs, and then also the difference between the 28 and the 48 five millimeter lenses. Um, yeah, just walk around, get, get a couple drinks. Get fires. G2. <laughs> is that it is a bitch and a half to carry. Excuse yeah, my French. Like it's a bit heavy. You gotta have a bag on you to carry it at all times. And it's a lot of money too, so I don't really want to get like down and dirty into like natural settings to shoot this, you know? Also with the titanium, I mean, it scratches super fast. I'm pretty sure I- Yo, I know some mine had some scratches too. Really? Yeah, 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 scratches that come out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure I had this big scratch on it probably like the first week I was shooting it. So yeah, I'm not you know I'm not a rich man you know <laughs> still set back from this camera but no honestly I feel like I don't need to point at you now just because I felt like this camera has helped me learn a lot about the aperture so now I've kind of mm. mastered the aperture as well so also you know a good camera if you want to learn a little bit but yeah overall I mean it's a great 35 mil I think top 35 mil that Contex has made highly recommend uh, yeah man go cop that go cop that I'll sell you mine for. Three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it for ten. Buy it for ten. <laughs> Full kit G2 with the lens and the body probably will run you at least 15, 1600 bucks for a good condition one, maybe even more, up to 2000. Boy, that escalated quickly. And when you pay that much money, you want something that'll perform consistently and reliably. I've got the 45 and then 28 millimeter lenses for this camera, and I've been shooting more extensively on the 45 just because it's a focal length that I don't currently have on any other setup. And overall, I think the quality of this camera really, really shines. I'm a big fan of using the flash in daylight situations. The flash that I got for my kit was the Contax TLA 200. It's a really expensive flash, but it's a, it's a really fun flash and it's really versatile. I love the size of it. I use this flash for both the Gucci Adidas campaign where it was shot indoors in kind of sort of low lit situations. And the Super 73 G-Star campaign that we shot, we also primarily use a Contax G2. I use the fill flash uh, in certain situations to illuminate the subjects 
uh, facial features. But besides that, shot it mostly just with natural lighting and then also used the 45 primarily because I didn't have the 28 at that time yet. When you think about who this camera is meant for, I think it really depends on what you shoot film for or how consistently you shoot film. If you're shooting film very often, whether that be for hobby or for professional use, um, I think it's a great camera just because it's super reliable, it's super easy and portable to carry around. It's a little bit heavy, but I think the variety of lenses that you have and sort of just the overall quality of this camera really shine through. So if you're someone who travels a lot or does campaigns on the go in the streets or you like to do street photography, I think this camera is amazing just because of its portability, its sort of size factor and ease of use. Um, if you're doing something more along the lines of like, let's say more studio photography, I think there are much better options that are bigger, bulkier, and that's why you probably wouldn't want to carry around too much. But if you're set down locally just in a, in a studio situation, I think you can get a much cheaper body and more variety of lenses as well. That'll be a better bang for your buck. Just to round out a few cons of this camera, I think the viewfinder is my biggest worry or biggest qualm about this camera. The viewfinder is really small. I mean, it's not that big of an issue, but it sort of is difficult to see like in harsh lighting situations where you're trying to just get in there and, and, and really see what your, your center point focus is or sort of the surrounding environment. That and it's a contact that's battery powered, so this thing could die at any second. Um, I mean, that's just, that's the nature of these things, right? So yeah, it's a great camera, it's pricey. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. It's cheaper than my T3, which was a nice uh, benefit of selling the T3 and buying this. So yeah, thanks again for sticking around to the end. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And thanks to Shimon for helping me shoot this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.